Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the National Infantry Museum and the rededication of our Global War on Terrorism Memorial. This memorial was originally dedicated in 2017. Each year on the Saturday following Labor Day, we will rededicate the memorial to honor those whose names have been added as our nation's longest war continues. We are delighted to welcome distinguished leaders and guests to the museum. We ask that you please hold your applause until all have been introduced. In the official party, our guest speaker for today's dedication, Lieutenant General Tom Metz. The commander of the Maneuver Center of Excellence in Fort Benning, Major General Gary Brito. Your host, the president of the National Infantry Museum Foundation, Brigadier General Pete Jones. The first senior enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Command Sergeant Major Joe Ganey. The Maneuver Center of Excellence Command Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Scott Burzak, and Chaplain Colonel Robert Hart, Command Chaplain of the Maneuver Center of Excellence. We are also pleased to have several distinguished leaders seated in the audience. General John Abizade, Lieutenant General Sam Wetzel, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army, Mr. John Hargrove, Civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army, Mr. Jim Balcom. Field representative to Representative Sanford Bishop, Mr. Kenneth Cutts. Field representative to Senator David Perdue, Ms. Kathy Burns. The Commanding General, Marine Corps Logistics Command, Brigadier General Joseph Schrader. The Chief of Infantry, Brigadier General David Hodney. The Chief of Armor, Brigadier General David Lesperance. Columbus City Council District 3, Councilor Mr. Bruce Huff. Columbus City Council District 9, Councilor Ms. Judy Thomas. Columbus City Council District 10, Councilor Colonel John House. Phoenix City Council District 2, Councilor Ms. Vicki Carter Johnson. The Rangers Ranger, Colonel Ralph Puckett. The President of the National Infantry Association, Colonel Rob Chapa, former mayor of Columbus, the Honorable Bob Poitashev, the Marine Corps Logistics Command Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Michael Rowan, the Infantry School Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Martin Celestine, the Armor School Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Kevin Mullenbeck. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome all of our distinguished visitors. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the colors, the playing of our national anthem, and remain standing for the invocation by Chaplain Colonel Hart. Active, veteran, and retired military members should render a salute, and civilians should place their right hand over their heart during the playing of the national anthem.
Join me in a word of prayer. Our gracious Lord, as we rededicate this global war on terrorism memorial, may we never forget our freedoms that were secured by men and women of our military. May this memorial stand as a solemn reminder of their dedication, their love, and their sacrifice. May our nation be a grateful for their love of country and their love of family. Renew us with the strength and continue the mission to protect the liberties and freedom wherever it is threatened. Now, Lord, we ask your blessings upon this ceremony and the members of the Gold Star families that are represented here. May you bless our United States of America. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now raise the flags of the four military services that supply forces to engage in the global war on terrorism. We ask that active duty members, veterans, and Gold Star families from each service stand while your service flag is raised. Those of you may be seated. Once again, you may be seated. Please stand when your service flag is being raised. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Air Force. the United States Navy. United States Marine Corps. United States Army. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of the National Infantry Museum Foundation, Brigadier General Pete Jones. Thank you very much and good morning and very much appreciate you suffering through a little bit of Georgia heat for something that we all know is very important to all of us. We truly appreciate your support for this event. And I'd like to especially thank not only our leaders from Columbus, but also from Fort Benning. And if you could give me a round of applause for our Patriot Guard, our band, our color guard, because they look phenomenal. <laughs> this morning we bring together not just infantrymen and not just soldiers, but a true family of all service members to recognize the service and sacrifice of all the soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines as we execute our duty and responsibility to add 28 names to the over 6,900 that are already engraved on our granite walls so that no service member is forgotten. As you've heard the long list of dignitaries, there is one group that deserves very, very special recognition. I've already done this to them a couple of times, but I'd like to do it again because we can't say it enough. Well, please, our Gold Star family members rise so we can provide you recognition. So please, all Gold Star families. <laughs> we heard each one of your individual stories over the last night and this morning and we are honored by your presence and we're humbled by your resiliency and your courage. Thank you for being, us with, being with us here today. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the memorial you see before you was designed to honor all who have served and those who have given their lives in the global war on terrorism since the attacks of September 11, 2001. Joining us today to highlight the design elements in the memorial, would you please welcome the commander of the U.S. Army Maneuver Center of Excellence and Fort Benning, Major General Gary Brito. Good morning, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, Command Sergeant Major Burzak and I are honored to be with you this morning. I would like to welcome all service members, veterans, retirees, first responders, our families, and distinguished guests from the greater Chattahoochee Valley region and many other places across the United States. And we thank you most of all for a heartfelt welcome to the Gold Star families. Your attendance here this morning is most humbling an evidence of your continued unwavering support of your loved one and your service. We thank you sincerely for the gift of this relationship and we thank you for being part and remaining part of the military team. Mr. Craig, Mrs. Harris, Mrs. Olson, and Mrs. Tanish, Thank you so much for your moving and your heartfelt words, both last night and this morning. Those words truly give passion to what we do, and they truly illustrate that when a service member serves, you as a family member serve as well. And for that, I really can't thank you enough, and we can't thank you enough. Thank you so much. It is indeed my sincere honor to serve in this capacity this morning as we pay tribute to the servicemen and women who gave their lives in service of our great nation. I would like to begin by highlighting the reason for this rededication ceremony. As stated earlier, a year ago when the construction of this global war and terrorism memorial was completed, the National Infantry Museum held the dedication ceremony in a proper remembrance of the service members whose names are etched in the granite plaques ahead of us. This year, 
we rededicate this memorial and have the honor of adding 28 additional service member names. Service members of all ranks, creeds, nationalities who this past year lost their lives in direct combat or support on this war on terror. Ladies and gentlemen, this site is, just, is more than just brick, mortar, and granite. The two cement pillars represent the Twin Towers and the over 3,000 innocent lives lost on September 11th, 2001. The steel beam forged in between the pillars is a portion of the North Tower of the World Trade Center, which was proudly donated by the New York Fire Department. On either entrance of the memorial, there are granite panels that depict the terror attacks that preceded 911, such as the attack on the USS Cole, and also highlighted in the art images are the attacks of September 11th in the various locations, the Pentagon, Pennsylvania, Washington, DC. All these images remind us of unspeakably, unspeakable events. However, they also remind us of the resiliency of the American spirit and the unsolicited heroism of first responders, military and civilian personnel, and yes, ordinary citizens who without hesitation ran to the calls for help and refused to be defeated by the evil actions of terrorists. These panels depict who we are as a nation, even in the face of danger and tragedy. And I would suggest that while faced with adversity, we as a country and we as a people become even stronger and protective of our very freedoms. That's why service members continue to serve. That's why first responders continue to give. And sadly, some service members pay the ultimate price. So I would invite you today, as you walk past the granite panels, you will find yourself in front of two large bronze statues. These statues proudly represent our soldiers who are currently serving abroad in support of the global war on terrorism. The almost two decades of this service represents the strength, the commitment, and the resiliency of these service members and the unwavering support of their families. In the center of the memorial, on a Pentagon-shaped pedestal, is a statue honoring Specialist Ross McGinnis who on December 4th, 2006, gave his life protecting the men of which he loved and he served with during a combat mission in Iraq. While on that combat mission, Specialist McGinnis had a choice. He had a choice, a choice to turn from danger or face it. And as we would expect every great soldier and service member to do, he chose to face it and with unflinching bravery, absorbed the blast of a grenade, thus saving his battle buddies, which we all know that he loved. Specialist McGinnis was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor in 2008, and it is with great honor that our Maneuver Center headquarters shares his name. Finally, we look at the eight large granite panels which hold the names of almost 7,000 service members. Service members who lost their lives while serving with honor, pride, and distinction. Names that are forever etched in stone and granite in the order that they fell so that we as a community can continue to memorialize their duty, their honor, and their sacrifice. Throughout the morning, I'll invite us all to look beyond the granite, look beyond the etching, and know that these names represent the very strength of America, the very soul of men and women who served because they loved their country. It is with the greatest pride that today, 
We will pay tribute to 28 men and women who fought and died for the very freedoms we enjoy. I'm sure you join me in that. We all pray that one day we will no longer rededicate this memorial and adding names to the panels before us. But I will tell you, so long as our nation is at war with those who wish to inflict terror on us or our allies, we will continue to stand tall and fight for our freedoms and fight for our patriotism and fight for what we know is right. Later today, I encourage you to take some time to walk around the memorial, honor those that you love, honor those that you have shared some time with, and give a due and proper respect to those soldiers that you do not, those service members that you do not. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the pleasure of your company today. Thank you for your support of the United States military. Let us never forget those memorialized on these panels and keep their families in your daily and your nightly prayers. God bless you all, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the first senior enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Command Sergeant Major Joe Ganey. Okay. It is with my great honor that I get to introduce not only my battle buddy of 13 hard months in Iraq, but my dear friend, Lieutenant General Tom Metz. General Metz joined the Army in 1966 as a private. That's very important to remember, as a private. He was a private for one year. Then he became a cadet at the United States Army West Point for four years and continued on to be a general officer for 39 years. He was my corps commander in 3rd Armored Corps, and he ended his 39 years as the director of the Joint IED organization in Virginia. At this time, I'd like to introduce again my battle buddy and dear friend, Lieutenant General Tom Metz, who's going to hug me when he walks up here. He always does. <laughs> Regretfully, my wife is in duty and up in Arlington and didn't make it, but my sister-in-law did. And Susie, please remind me to, uh, not to wear a black suit next year to this event. <laughs> Let me add uh, my welcome uh, to you this morning. As we rededicate our Global War on Terror Memorial, let me also offer a special thanks to the Gold Star families uh, whose soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines offered the ultimate sacrifice and the greatest act of love to offer his or her life for a friend. Their sacrifice probably began in support of service members to their right and to their left, but extends to all Americans. Each day, America is safer from terrorism due to the courage and valor of our service members. A special thanks to those in uniform today, Active Guard and Reserve, who stand ready every day to s protect the nation. And to those who have honorably served and their service is complete, our veterans, I extend a hearty thanks. An additional thanks to the Patriot Guard for the great service, loyalty to every opportunity. Thank you very much for joining us. And lastly, to those who labor behind the scenes to plan, prepare, and execute this ceremony. On October the 16th last year, the National Infantry Museum and Soldier Center, Global War on Terrorism, Terror was dedicated. The fundraising and the planning began many months before, and with the visionary guidance and the unwavering support of General Abizé, the idea of the memorial became a reality. I don't think any of us who were involved realized the significant honor and closure this beautiful memorial would facilitate. If you have not seen it at night, please do. It is worth a separate trip to South Columbus. It's that beautiful at night. Now allow me to tell a quick story. I know it's hot, but this is a good story. 
The intent of the memorial was always to include the Army's branches beyond the infantry and the sister services beyond the Army. You've already seen the service flags raised, and there are etchings on the granite of pictures. The quality of those pictures had to be the very best to get them etched properly. Their messages had to be correct, flawless. Hundreds of pictures were initial candidates, and hours of debate helped us pick the best from each service. As a multinational corps commander, as my battle buddy mentioned, I was very involved in the second battle for Fallujah to free the city from the enemy in order to conduct the first Iraqi free election in January 2005. One of the Marine pitchers is the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Kent, speaking with logisticians about the upcoming battle. The pitcher helps depict the spectrum of, of Marine activities, and it includes the first Sergeant Ma the future Sergeant Major of the entire Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Kent. We did not realize that one of the Marines in the picture gave the ultimate sacrifice during the battle. The parents of that Marine were at the dedication and not only found their son in the picture, but also got to meet and spend time with Sergeant Major Kent because he had participated in the dedication. I am thankful when God gives us these special moments. And I know more stories like this will be told in coming years. In our plan for the memorial, we regretfully acknowledge the additional space would be needed on the granite panels for future KIAs. As the months pass and plans began for the annual event to rededicate the memorial, we decided to establish the first Saturday after Labor Day as the rededication date. Although the days between the first Saturday after Labor Day and September the 11th will vary, the rededication will always be close to the anniversary of the horrible and cowardly 9-11 attacks on America. We all remember where we were and what we did on 9-11. I was in the Pentagon watching the report from the World Trade Center. My wife was shopping several miles from the Pentagon. She heard and felt the blast from the Pentagon attack while I was unaware of it because I was as far away from the point of attack as one could be in that five-layered, five-sided building. Once I got everyone accounted for in the J-8, I went into the center of the Pentagon to help. Our group was told from, by a firefighter that all rescued personnel will be taken to the Pentagon South Parking. So we moved in that direction. With hundreds of first responders, God bless them, on site, most of us just stared at the fight between the fire retardant foam and the crash planes burning jet fuel. Somewhere in all the chaos, I learned of the heroes who had forced the terrorists to crash United Flight 93 into a field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania. And I said a prayer of thanks for their courage, for they surely saved many lives at the U.S. Capitol or the White House. As I prayed for victims of the 9-11 attack, I also prayed for wisdom in preparation of commanding the 24th Division at Fort Riley, Kansas. I did not have a vision of the coming war, but I was sure soldiers from Fort Riley would be in it. On Tuesday, 17 years have passed since our enemies attacked our homeland. Young Americans who were born after 9-11 have begun and will soon fill the ranks of those serving our nation. To quote General Abizé from his keynote speech at the ded dedication, we cannot be a great nation, nor can our values survive without those who are willing to serve and do their duty for the collective good wherever the battle finds them. Who are the service members fighting war for us? The answer to that question is simple. They are the best of Americans. First and foremost, they are volunteers, not drafted or forced into service. For the last 45 years, they have filled the ranks of our armed forces with volunteers and will continue to do so. But few Americans realize that in order to enter the armed forces of the United States, you must be a high school graduate, be healthy, and have a felony-free record. Failure of one of those three requirements eliminates 75% of our young men and women 
from serving in the armed forces. Based on these educational health and moral eth metrics, only the best are allowed to serve. Recruiting is not without its challenges, but in these good economic times. Universities, colleges, industry, nonprofits, state, federal, municipal agencies all seek those top 25% men and women. Nevertheless, our armed forces are full of high quality enlistees and soldiers who learn early on that war is a contact sport. Fighting the enemy is dangerous and dirty, requiring strength, stamina, and character. You have to be able to count on those to your left and right, front and rear. Training gets them ready for the expected, while education gets them ready for the unexpected. And let me assure you, we are the world's best trainers and best educators of our service members. No matter how well the service cadres prepare the members for combat, the enemy has a vote. When the enemy wounds a service member, we are fortunate to have the world's best medics and medical systems. In this war, countless lives have been saved due to the investment we made in medical structure, personnel, and unit training. But killed in action, KIAs do occur. And it is our responsibility, our responsibility, those of us safely at home, to honor their service with the compassion and dignity rightfully do those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. As long as there is one KIA due to the war on terror, we will gather here on the first Saturday after Labor Day to rededicate this magnificent memorial. As I pointed out at the dedication last year, families and friends of graduating soldiers will take the Heritage Walkway to the parade field this walkway, to that parade field. They will pass between our three quarters Vietnam Wall and the Global War on Terrorism Memorial. The grandparents will see their generation's Vietnam Wall and the parents will see their generation's Global War on Terrorism Memorial. And the graduating soldiers and attending children will know that America cares. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Today come hot day. Please visit the museum. It's the best free museum in the country. And it is in the top 12 military museums in the world. And that's competing against museums that are a thousand years old in Europe. We are really good. Have a great afternoon. Cool off a little bit. Have a good evening. Traveling mercies to you all. God bless you and God bless America. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as the Maneuver Center of Excellence Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Scott Burzak, reads the names of the fallen that have been added to the Global War on Terrorism Memorial this year. And please remain standing for the playing of taps. We ask that active, veteran, and retired military members should render a salute, and civilians should place their right hand over their heart during the playing of taps. Staff Sergeant Curtis John Gardner, Air Force. Specialist Alexander Wayne Misseldine, Army. Chief Warrant Officer 3, Jacob Michael Sims, Army. Staff Sergeant, correction, Sergeant First Class, Stephen Baxter Cribben, Army. Chief Warrant Officer 2nd, Lee Michael Smith, Army. Sergeant First Class, Hutton O'Neill Brown, Army. Corporal, Todd Lane McGurn, Army. Sergeant Axel Omar Bonilla Perez, Army. Staff Sergeant David Thomas Brabander, Army. Specialist Avedon Alfred Chavez, Army. Master Sergeant Brian Lee Stillwell, Army. Sergeant First Class Mihal Golan, Army. Specialist, Javion 
Shavante Sullivan, Army. Sergeant Christina Marie Schonecker, Army. Sergeant First Class Matlin DeWeaver Wilson, Army. Major Christopher Tripp Zanettis, Air Force. Captain Mark Kenneth Weber, Air Force. Master Sergeant Christopher Joseph Raguso, Air Force. Master Sergeant William Ryan Posh, Air Force. Major Andreas Brian O'Keefe, Air Force. Staff Sergeant Carl Philippe Ennis, Air Force. Technical Sergeant Deshaun Jamar Briggs, Air Force. Master Sergeant Jonathan J. Dunbar, Army. Petty Officer Second Class, Austin Thomas Williams, Navy. Specialist, Gabriel David Conde, Army. Corporal, Joseph Maciel, Army. Sergeant First Class, Christopher Andrew Salise, Army. Sergeant First Class, Raymond Ray Regal Transfiguration, Army. Today's missing man flyby was performed by Fort Benning's Ranger Flight Company. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as Chaplain Hart closes our ceremony with the benediction. We dismiss with the Lord's benediction. Our gracious God, as we close this ceremony, we ask that we remember and we honor the sacrifice of these brave men and women, and more that their country loved, and because of that, we can live free, and we can live with liberty. May you dismiss us now, Lord, with your blessings for the service members and their families. We ask that your continued blessings to be upon them. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite each of you to enter and explore the Global War on Terrorism Memorial and to visit the National Infantry Museum. Volunteers are standing by with materials to make rubbings of the names on the memorial. This concludes our ceremony. Thank you for coming.